Hispanic Americans say they are fearful and anxious in the wake of the mass shooting in El Paso. A gunman opened fire inside a Walmart and killed 22 people Saturday. A racist manifesto posted online before the shooting claimed, quote, this attack is a response to the Hispanic invasion of Texas. Since the shooting, President Trump has come under scrutiny for his use of the word invasion to describe migrants. His critics have linked his language to the manifesto. Our newest CBS News contributor, Maria Elena Salinas, joins us. She's a veteran journalist who has co-anchored Univision's evening news program for more than 30 years. Maria Elena, welcome. Thanks so much for being it's here. It's such a pleasure to be it's with you. It's great to have you in the family. I wish it was under better circumstances. Yes, so do I. But let's talk, let's talk about this, because we heard from some people in El Paso earlier in the broadcast, Hispanics, who, who, who every one of them articulated so eloquently how fearful they are about the climate in this country. What have you heard? I think something very similar. I think what, they, what they're feeling is fear, disbelief, and anger. Even though there's been fear before, maybe it was fear of being separated from your family, now they fear for their lives. And, you know, as a matter of point, it's disbelief because they can't understand why is this happening to them in their community, a welcoming community, a community that lives in harmony with their neighbors mm -hmm. uh, south of the border. And they're angry because they believe they were targeted in revenge for being um, sort of like ground zero for the immigration debate and for the separation of families. They mentioned a militia, an armed militia who was there just a few months ago, uh, who got their armed and said, we're here representing President Trump uh, to stop the invasion. That is similar language that we saw in the manifesto, and that is similar language that we have heard from the president, and of course, Veronica Escobar, Representative Escobar, uh, told me that her and her constituents don't feel that uh, this is a matter of partisan politics, but a matter, a, a humanitarian matter. That it, people are not being seen as humans. Is this just El Paso, though? What are you hearing from other communities? I think that this is across the board. I spoke to uh, lead community leaders and, and leading organizations in California and Arizona. In Arizona, uh, Lucha told me that this is something that they have been fearing for a long time. Um, they say that people in their community are afraid to go out. She uh, told me the story of a, of a young lady who said, I was planning on going to Walmart with my mother, and now um, I'm, I'm afraid to go to any public space. But, you know, Arizona is a very resilient community, and they're very active, very proactive, and they are already planning not only to have um, different ceremonies to honor uh, those who were killed, but also uh, to go out there and, and, and get people mobilized and get them to, to vote. And in California, um, Chirla, another organization, uh, told me something very interesting. She said that the fear has been there for a long time, again, since the president came into office. And, and what they are feeling is that people feel unprotected. It's not only that they feel threatened, but they feel unprotected because they feel that that, that rhetoric and that agenda mm -hmm. has extended to all institutions in the country. There's 57 million, over 57 million Latinos in this country, most of them born in this country. Right. How do you counter those fears and also the rhetoric that we've heard from our president? I think you counter that by telling your story and by using your voice. And, and I'm glad you mentioned that because the majority are uh, Americans, and people need to understand that Latinos are Americans too. And there seems to be a perception out there that Latinos are immigrants or that they don't belong here, and that couldn't be farther from, from the truth. 60% uh, are American citizens um, born in the U.S. Another 30% are naturalized citizens. They have just as much right as anyone else that became a naturalized citizen, like Melania Trump, for example. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the, they need to be seen as Americans, and they need to stop feeling threatened and feeling like they are foreigners in their own country. Maria Elena, we, we saw in the, in the graphic just there that, that Latinos now make up 18 percent of the U.S. population. Right. Do they have a sense of their political power, do you think? I think they do have a sense of their political power, but at the same time, there's many people that don't go out and vote. You know, the, the, the percentage of people that go out and vote, the turnout is very low among, among Latinos, but that has been changing in, in the last elections. And it's changing not n on a national level, but you see it in Arizona, you see it in Nevada, you see it in, 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 in Florida, in California. During the midterm elections, we saw a tremendous increase in voter registration and, and, and people going out to vote voter turnout, especially among young Latinos, who are the ones that are really driving now the, the political force in, in the community. Maria Elena Salinas, thank you so much for joining us. We look forward to seeing more of you. Thank you. It's my pleasure.